What's up everyone, Michael here with another video. Um, I don't even know what to like intro this series as because I don't even know what it's going to be called. But regardless, we're doing a Let's Play thingy. And today we're playing Floating Point. Um, and I just made a world-breaking discovery, right? This is something that I believe nobody else has ever discovered except for maybe one other person and they have not been vocal about it. And it's that in this game, when you start it up, if you just sit there and don't actually touch anything, the little ball, or point as they call it, We'll go back and forth at the same exact momentum, same exact speed, and end at the same exact point. Yeah, right, nobody cares. Anyways, we're gonna play a game called Floating Point because it's nice and chill, it's nice and relaxed, and I'm exhausted. I just got home from doing a really, really long bike ride for the second time after work and everything, and I'm exhausted. And so I was looking for something relaxing and ended up playing some JRPGs for like the last three hours, which I didn't intend to do. I was sitting there playing and I'm just like, hmm, what time is it? And I look back at the clock. I'm like, huh. All right. <laughs> and so basically now I'm doing this. So there we go. That's how my day has been. I have a little bit more energy than I thought I would that I've got to say. I'm physically tired, maybe not mentally tired, though, because I didn't really do anything mentally intensive. I just kind of like sat around basically I don't, I don't know sat on a bike and <laughs> like for an eight mile bike ride which is not particularly fun i gotta say I, for people that don't know um which is probably pretty much everyone on the internet i got a new day job and basically it's really far away from home and so yeah for the last two days or whatever three days depending on when this video comes out it's actually been really, really fun to do an entire eight mile bike ride all the way home because the buses in this area don't actually run that late, which is very unfortunate. And so, yeah, I've been doing that and that's fun, but it kind of made me thinking while I was on that trip, I was like, hmm, for one, I really want simple games. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the other thing I was actually thinking about was like the way things kind of get easier, the more you do them, it's very, very strange and bizarre. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about that as well. But anyways, let's talk about the game real quick. So basically this is floating point. It's a very simple game and it is very, very free on steam. Very, very free. That's another thing I should say. You can tell I'm not coherent. <laughs> That's fine. But regardless, it's on steam and it's free. I played it years ago and I called it literally the chillest game ever. And for some reason, I always kind of remembered it, but I never ended up going back to it. And I was like, screw it. I'm really tired. And I kind of want to play something very, very simple. So I kind of like looked back at what I'd already played and I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll try that one again. And it's, it hasn't changed, it hasn't been updated or anything like that, but it's still really, really fun. It's basically a game where you play as a floating point, and you have a little line that you can create. So you left click and you make a line to wherever you point it, and it'll target onto blocks, of course. And you can right click to get rid of them, which is actually pretty fun. Actually, it's basically the entire concept of the game is you're just supposed to float around and you're trying to collect these bars that pop up from the other bars that you'll run into. And so there's collision bars and then non-collision bars. And basically, I just think I finished the level. Nope, I haven't finished the level yet. There is a few more up at the top. There's two left. Okay, it says it down in the bottom right. But yeah, you're just supposed to collect those bars. And the entire idea is that you're supposed to end up going pretty much as efficiently as you possibly can to try and go through without touching these sort of blocks. There we go. I finished the level. And then it shows you where all you, you went. And basically, you're supposed to collect all of the bars without really touching the blocks. Because when you touch the blocks, you lose momentum. When you lose momentum the blocks or the bars end up getting smaller and so it makes it a little bit more challenging however this game's infinite it has no timer or anything like that i mean technically it does you can end up timing yourself if you really wanted to but it's a game to where you're just kind of relaxing and going through because when you fall down to the bottom you don't die there's no game over there's just it you know just kind of puts you into the other zone you end up going the opposite direction it's very very elegant in the way that it's built now, I believe this game was actually built in Unity as well, like back when it first was actually, you know, being used in games, which is actually really, really interesting because back then it was actually difficult to make a game in Unity without following YouTube tutorials. And so there you go. That was kind of credible. But yeah, this is a very, very simple project and I actually enjoy it quite a bit. It's like I said, it's the chillest game ever. And that seems to be what everyone else was saying as well. I looked up on the Steam page and it was like chillest game ever. And I'm like, yeah, pretty much. It's it's very, very chill. And there's really no... I mean, there is a challenge to it if you want to get competitive with it, but there really isn't at the same time. But yeah, so that's how that went. Um, what did I say I was going to talk about? I don't remember. <laughs> I already forgot. Wow, that's how tired I am. You can definitely tell I'm not 100% there compared to my other videos. This is why I didn't actually record another type of video, by the way. It's one of those things where it's like, I don't think that I would be able to mentally. Like, I'm just, yeah, just not 
kind of able to, I guess. I don't, I don't really know what to say on that. I could end up recording and then ending the recording and then coming back and being like, oh, that's what I was going to talk about and then completely forgot. Oh yeah, I was uh, playing some JRPGs for the last three hours when I got home. And this is actually because I was actually thinking about something that I was end up working on a while back. And I haven't finished it yet because I got partly done and I was kind of having some hitches here and there on the kind of argument. And it was a design view video, which is basically, if you haven't watched it yet, you can end up checking out my latest one where I talk about why uh, key resellers are bad. But regardless, it's a series where I basically try and kind of explain things within the gaming industry in more depth. It's kind of like a split off of the topic series I used to do, which I'm still doing that, but I'm kind of changing the format. So topic stuff is going to be like news that I find interesting and find incredibly relevant, but it's not really going to have a lot of substance. It's mostly going to be the story and my opinions on it and sort of a brash overview if there's any more information that needs to be done. While design view is going to be more industry focused, it's going to be more about um, like information and stuff like that and more researched as well, more, you know, more thought put into it, which is what my topic series basically started as. But yeah, regardless, semantics. Um, yeah, so I was actually thinking, because I was riding my bike home from work, which is an eight-mile bike ride, and I was thinking, you know, the more times I do this, the easier it gets, and that's kind of like a simple thing. And I was having a hitch kind of thinking of alternatives to sort of video game progression, because that's one of the big problems with JRPGs, and this entire video that I was working on was about the problems with JRPGs. And when I was thinking about the RPG elements, I'm like, all right, what are some solutions to this? Because I obviously have some solutions, but they're very, very niche in the way that they kind of work. And I was like, all right, well, this doesn't actually provide like general sort of useful information. It's not stuff that's like, hey, you know, they, everybody could use this. But I was thinking because like, let's say you're like riding a bike, like the entire reason why the sort of RPG leveling system even exists is to show a way of growing in power which is, you know, kind of very simple. And the problem with it is that we've kind of gotten stuck in a way to where we just kind of do it the old way and use a, almost Skinner box in most modern games these days. And a lot of people kind of lose sight of what the entire kind of leveling mechanics used to be. Now in classic JRPGs, they did one thing that was kind of about grinding and stuff like that. Like they had sort of like, I guess, mandatory grinding in some games. To where it's like, oh yeah, this is a classic JRPG. That means that I'm going to have to grind in this sort of area and gain these levels. And it was kind of a way to pad out your game when it wasn't really particularly long. However, there's actually a lot of games that do progression fairly interesting in a lot of ways. However, they all kind of bound themselves to this sort of XP system or they have like artifacts. Now, one game that I'm playing through that's going to be in these Let's Play series, by the way, and it's actually a lot more interesting. It's not like this. It's actually talking about um, emulation and stuff like that, because we're playing Crystal Chronicles through the Dolphin emulator, and it's actually really, really cool. And so uh, that'll be releasing eventually once I actually figure out how to figure out how to, um, I guess, capture that properly. But regardless, um, or not capture, but um, display the capture properly. Basically, I'm capturing a GameCube and a Game Boy Advance at the same time. And I don't have a template or anything for that, so I have to like build an entire thing and I just haven't had time to do it yet. But regardless, that'll be coming out eventually. But that game has a really interesting sort of system towards progression to where it kind of uses a sort of pseudo kind of artifact system to where you find artifacts in levels. And basically at the end of a level, you're able to keep one. And that's actually how you increase your stats along with equipment and stuff like that too. And it's a really interesting system because it also ties into the game's memories. The entire idea is that you have this journal and everything like that. I'm not going to spoil it. Go watch those videos when they come out if you're actually interested. Or go look it up on the internet. There's plenty of it. But yeah, it's it's a really interesting sort of take on that progression. And when I was younger, I kind of hated it because it was different. And I'm like, oh, but I just want to grind levels because I was a kid and didn't really care. But now that I'm you know older and actually know things about game design and I actually play a lot of different types of games, I appreciate that system a lot more. And that game has actually been a lot better than it used to be just because of those simple facts. It ended up staying unique to whereas so many JRPGs that people like praise and everything like that have not. Um, I know that people always say like play uh, the Super Mario RPGs and stuff like that. And like, I don't feel like they held up at all in any sense of the word. And yes, they are not bad games, but at the same time, they didn't really hold up. However, those games did unique things for the time period. They didn't end up holding up. Same thing with um, Dragon's Lagoon. Is that what it's called? Dragon's Lagoon? Is it Drake's Lagoon? I don't, I don't know. It's something like that. Or Lancer's Dragoon? I, 
wow, I cannot remember the name for a PS1 game I spent over 300 hours in. Um, regardless, um, yeah, that game did a lot of interesting things back in the day. It does not hold up whatsoever, especially the story. The story is very much the PS1 era of we have a JRPG, so we're going to make it dark and gritty and it's going to be futuristic and not futuristic at the same time because that's what we did. I remember Shadow Madness was like that, but Shadow Madness was interesting because it did a lot of interesting things with the sort of world and it was a very much not necessarily or rather not only a darker world, but it was also a very mature world as well. And they ended up kind of going around a lot of very adult-oriented themes, which is really cool and probably not something I should have been playing when I was nine. But regardless, um, that was an interesting one. But back onto the leveling system stuff, it's like a lot of games need to discover kind of what progression is. They need to like refocus what it is because we see so many modern games, like let's say games like Far Cry, for example, which has unfortunately been made in a route to be kind of sort of generic they ended up going towards a sort of xp system however far cry 3 did a really interesting system where you ended up getting tattoos and as you use them you could see um jason brody i believe was his name or something the main protagonist um you could see him sort of going more and more as you progress through the story and got these new abilities you could kind of see him becoming more of this sort of satanic killer guy instead of just a normal character and that was really really interesting in a way and it didn't necessarily have to change the formula but it showed what progression was. And I feel like a lot of games have kind of forgotten that in a lot of senses. And not that Crystal Chronicles sort of solves this problem in a large way, but it does a lot of interesting things that make it so that that progression is a little bit more noticeable and does it in a more interesting way to where you kind of actually want to know how it works. So yeah, it's it's very, very interesting. This game has no progression, however, it's, it's the thing. Also, if you're wondering about my eight mile bike ride and why I'm doing it, basically I got a new day job that's like, um, I don't know, did I already mention this? I don't remember. I forgot what I even said like three minutes ago. I am so exhaustingly tired. Um, but regardless, um, yeah, I got a new day job. It's really, really far away. And so basically I've been riding my bike for the last few days and it's been uh, exhausting, quite physically exhausting. But apparently I have energy, enough energy to do one of these, although I am tired because I spent the last three hours just sitting there playing JRPGs because I don't know. I was supposed to record a video and I got caught up playing video games, <laughs> which I'm playing a video game to record for. Anyways, this is going to be me for this video. And we've been playing Floating Point. Link in the description if you want to check it out. It is free. And so you can end up checking it out. It is super chill. And I love just playing it every once in a while. It's It's been a really long time since I played it. And it's exactly the same and still just as fun to play as well. So that's a thing. I guess that's a positive. Or is that a negative? I don't really know. Some people might think it's stupid, but I like it. I'm not playing particularly well. I just, I'm not really focused, to be honest. I'm going to go back to playing JRPGs for the next hour, and then I'm going to pass out. So, uh, yeah. See you guys in the next video. You can also end up checking out my other videos as well, which you should do. Like, comment, and subscribe. All of that. Um, check out my impressions review series, by the way. I did one for Ori in the Blind Forest, which is an incredible platformer. If you're interested in games that are not simple, but have some really interesting concepts and absolutely fantastic design and a fantastic art style, that is one you should check out. Although, if you don't like platformers, you'll probably hate it because it is actually quite challenging. But that is a draw for some people as well. You can also end up checking out my design view series, which is something I ended up mentioning for a small amount of time. So, yeah, that's a thing I'm doing. It's basically a more advanced topic video, and I do research and I guess what you could call journalism almost. Yeah! I'm, I'm, I'm breaking new bounds. Anyway, see you guys in the next video.